Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, lesson 14-5, Converting Metric Units. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by Pablo Picasso, the artist, who said, I am always doing that which I cannot do in order that I may learn how to do it. It's exactly what we want to do in math. We want to practice the things that we cannot do so that we can learn how to do it. Our learning goal tonight is to practice using the King Henry strategy to convert metric units of length, capacity, and weight. That's right, we're going to practice all three types of metric conversion. Our individual lesson learning goals, just like our general one, because what we're doing is we're taking all of the individual lesson learning goals from all three of those last lessons, um, and we are practicing all of them. So we're gonna use that King Henry strategy. There's the three musicians. I have that hanging in my house. First of all, our vocabulary, don't forget that a gram is the base unit, the base metric unit that we use to measure weight and mass. The liter is the metric unit used to measure liquid volume or capacity. Those are the same things. And the meter is the metric unit used to measure length. And so all of our prefixes are going to have the word meter, liter, or gram oh my, meters, liters, and grams, oh my, one of those after it. So if we're measuring length, we'll have kil kilometers or kilometers, hectometers, decameters, meters is where we, we insert where the unit um, label is, decimeters, centimeters, and millimeters. Remember the soft C sound in deci is next to the soft C sound in centi, and the hard K sound in deca is on the side with the hard K sound in kilo. Our um, acronym that we want to remember is King Henry died, unfortunately, that's our units where we insert meter, li meters, liters, and grams, drinking chocolate milk. So we're going to be doing quite a bit of practice with that. We don't need to do examples because we have done them. So we're going to start doing our practice. If you didn't watch any of the previous lessons, we're talking about 12-2, 14-2 and 14-3. You can go back and watch those and it teaches you how to do each type of conversion. So our first practice problem is 80 millimeters equals how many centimeters? Remember to actually write this down and use King Henry to move your decimal. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write eight centimeters? Let's see how we did that. So I've written down our problem with what we know first. We know that we have 80 millimeters. We want to know how many centimeters that is. And because we're using metric conversion, we write down the acronym for King Henry died, unfortunately, drinking chocolate milk, which stands for kilo, hecto, deca. This is where we're going to insert the unit meter, deci, centi, and milli. And remember that these are all units of 10. This is a base 10 system. So where this is one meter, this is one tenth of a meter, one hundredth of a meter, one thousandth of a meter. Milla stands for thousand, not million. This would be 10 meters, 100 meters, and 1,000 meters. So we don't need to remember that as we're converting, but it's a good idea just to understand that. Um, that's when we love metric. We can just multiply by 10 and get just about anything, or multiply by 100 and figure it out. So we're starting at millimeters, so we look for the M milla. Here it is, and we're going to end with the C in centimeters. So from milla to centimeters, we jump one place to the left, because remember, we don't count the one we're on. We don't count till we jump one. So we moved one place to the left. So we draw our arrow to the left and then rewrite our number. This is our working number. And if you don't see a decimal in a number, remember it's always at the end of the number. So we're gonna move that decimal one place to the left in the same direction as the arrow, which means it's not there anymore, it's now here. And when we rewrite eight decimal zero, we just write it as eight. We don't need the zero after the decimal, and then if we don't have a digit after it, we don't need the decimal either. So 80 millimeters equals eight centimeters. Number two, 23 and eight tenths grams equals how many kilograms? Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write 238 ten thousandths 
Remember, you read that like a regular number, 238, and then you say the place value position name. So start with the decimal, decimal tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. So 238 ten thousandths kilograms. Let's see how we got that. So we are starting out with 23 and 8 tenths grams, and we are we want to know how many kilograms are equivalent to that. So here is our base unit of grams. Remember, grams always comes under the unit, and we're going to jump to the K in kilograms. <clears throat> so we jump one, two, three places to the left. So let's write our workspace and write our number down in our workspace, and we'll take that decimal and we're going to move it three places to the left. One, two, three. So our decimal is here, it's no longer here. When you move something, it's not where it started, it's where you ended up moving it to. So we're gonna fill in this empty, I call them egg cups, with an egg or a zero. And then because we have a decimal and a decimal says and, we always put another digit on the other side. So when we rewrite this, we have 238 ten thousandths. Number three, five liters equals how many milliliters? Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write 5,000 milliliters? Let's see how we did that one. So we know that liters is our base unit. And we are starting with liters right here and we are jumping to milliliters right here. Remember to capitalize that L so it doesn't look like a one. So we're jumping from here. So we start here, one, two, three, to the right. So we'll write our problem here. If we don't see a decimal, we know it's at the end of a number and we're going to jump that decimal three places to the right. One, two, three. Now our decimal's here, it's not here anymore, but we do have to fill in those empty spaces with zeros. And we never need a decimal at the very end of a number. It doesn't have any use here, so we don't write it. 5,000 milliliters. So here's our practice word problem. This isn't going to be worked out exactly the way we've been converting the other metric units, so read the problem really carefully. Number four, the instructions for a science experiment call for 532 milligrams of potassium. What is the difference between this amount and one gram? So first of all, we need to know how many milligrams are in one gram. And we can look at Ken King Henry to figure that out. So think about that. And then the second step is going to be finding the difference between that amount and the original amount. So think about that. Pause it and push play when you think you figured it out. Write it in a complete sentence. Did you write the difference between one gram, which is 1,000 milligrams, and 532 milligrams is 468 milligrams. That sounds like a lot of numbers. Let's take a look at that on the bamboo tablet. So I wrote down that we need 532 milligrams of potassium, and we want to know how many milligrams are in one gram. So this is our King Henry chart. Remember, a gram is the basic unit. And to jump from the unit of gram to milligram, is one, two, three to the right. So we're gonna jump three spaces in this direction. So we'll take our one and write it below. Here's our decimal when we can't see it. So we're gonna jump at one, two, three spaces to the right. It's not there anymore. Fill our empty loops with zeros and we have 1,000 milligrams. Now, that would be great if the question asked us how many milligrams are in a gram, but it didn't. It asked us, what is the difference between one gram and 532 milligrams? So we have to take that 1,000 milligrams and subtract 532 from it. Now, remember, I don't like subtracting from one zero at a time, so I'm gonna come, I, don't, I can't take two away from zero, so I'm gonna take that 100, take one away from it, and then write 99 above it. And now I'll write 10 minus two is eight, 9 minus 3 is 6, and 9 minus 5 is 4. Or my sentence would read, the difference between 1 gram or 1,000 milligrams equals 468 milligrams. It's time to challenge yourself. 
Pablo Picasso put five thousandths, remember decimal, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, five thousandths kiloliters in a wading pool to cool off while he was painting in the hot sun. If the pool actually holds 500 liters, how many more liters of water would he need to completely fill the pool? Show your work in your flip journal and come back tomorrow ready to check your answer. Have some fun with that. Finishing up. I like those pictures of Pablo Picasso working in his studio. Um, review your learning goals. Do you understand what we did tonight? We were just reviewing skills that we've already practiced and learned in the previous lessons 12-2, 14-2, and 14-3. If you need to, go back and review or practice them again. Write down if you think you're at a one, two, or three level in your learning and write down any questions you still have. Crazy King Henry, you have completed lesson 14-5, Converting Metric Units. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.